in their late 20s, teenagers, younger kids, they were all saying, oh, well, like that episode of Steven Universe, and I'd say, tell me about the episode. And they were telling me about this cartoon that they were watching that uh, encroached on things like continued consent. Yo! Spoilers, spoilers. Wait, go for it, then. So there's a cartoon called Street in the Universe. It's fantastic. It's a really cool show. It's unique in the sense that the main character becomes more complicated to the point where it's really, really hard to even explain. It's a little boy who's his mom, who's also... Uh, I don't know how far in the series you are, but he's also a intergalactic mm-hmm. queen who's also a rock. Mm-hmm. All in the same person. Yeah. And it... It, the show's about relationships, but it's just a question of, like, I've never seen this level of relationships in one show. Before. The one thing that... So, I had all these clients keep telling me about it, keep talking about it. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, especially people on the autism spectrum. Mm. Um, people who were having a hard time with social interactions and understanding other people's motivations. And so, uh, people in their late 20s, teenagers, younger kids, they were all saying, oh, well, like that episode of Steven Universe. And I'd say, tell me about the episode. And they were telling me about this cartoon that they were watching that uh, encroached on things like continued consent. Continued consent? Because Steven and his friend, the young girl, Connie, Connie yes. they go into the bubble together. And there's the whole time Steven, they say, well, I've never done this before. Is it okay with you if we do this? And then while they're doing it, they say, are you still okay? Are you still all right? Are you still on board with this? And then after they separate from each other. Oh, when yeah, they fuse. Yeah, when they fuse. Okay, okay, After they separate okay. from each other, they say, are you, are you okay again? What did you think about that? How do you feel about doing that in the future? Like, there is continued consent throughout the process of them fusing. Hmm. Um, and so we talk about I talk about consent every time I talk about sex at all with a client we talk about safety and consent first and then we can talk about whatever so bringing up consent with these younger kids oh yeah like when Steven and Connie did this thing he just kept checking they kept checking on each other let me ask you a question then when do you think is a good time to introduce concepts such as consent to people and is it to the point where it's too complicated to put into a kid's show no. it should only be for adults right. like for people who would say that what do you think right I think consent starts from day one from birth from birth you from you from birth you're talking to your baby you're holding your baby you're hugging your baby uh, when your baby is screaming and asking for a hug ah. you hug your baby if your baby needs to get down you let your baby down so you can do those things but then as we get older we name body parts yes right? so you talk about body parts very friendly so that they can talk about their body parts very friendly so that if anything were to happen that was not consensual they can easily talk about what happened and then you know you're playing tickle fights with a toddler right sure 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 so you tickle 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 and they say no and you stop that's consent and they say okay go and then you go ah, okay okay and okay they say no and you stop hmm. or um you know a four-year-old all right we'll go hug grandma and grandpa goodbye i don't want to okay well how about we say goodbye in another way maybe we should high five them what do you think about waving it's about not forcing someone to do with their body what they don't want to do. And so you allow your child to have some control over, you know, their intimacy. Who I'm hugging. Their intimacy. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm okay. not going to tell you you need to go press your body firmly against another body. Hmm. If you're not cool with that, I would never do that to an adult. But I'm you would be like, like uh, you stink, take a shower. Right. I don't want to take a shower. You're getting naked. Right, right, right. You're right, right, being right. put in that shower, or right. I will do it, it to bad. you. Yeah. Where do you draw that line? I, I, right. This is like some new parent question. I know I'm a little yeah. jumping the gun here, but yeah. like, where do you plan on drawing that line with regard to like? Right. So we. Yes. No. It's like, about choices. I have to override that for your own safety right. versus. You want your people to believe to to feel like we have some control over what happens to us, mm. right? And so I can say, I hear you saying that you don't want to take a bath. Uh huh. That's so, good. Here's the deal: since you have to be clean, uh, you can choose to take a shower. Okay. Or you can choose to take a bath in the morning. That's up to you. You can either take a bath tonight, mm. take a shower tonight, or you can do something in the morning. But before we go to Grandma's house, you have to. You be gotta clean. be clean. 
So you can choose, but those are your options. Do you ever wonder from a sense of, I also need to make sure this kid's disciplined and they may hate they may hate eating their vegetables right now, but yeah. they might love vegetables later on. They'll be like, hey, you remember when you forced me to eat those vegetables? I'm kind of glad you did because right. it, it worked out pretty well. What choices? Can you just be like, hey, I understand you don't want to take a shower. Guess what? <laughs> if you choose not to take a shower, then you're choosing not to go to grandma's house. Hmm. If you choose not to take a shower, then you're choosing not to have dessert. Oh, it looks like you're choosing not to have dessert. That's up to you. That's your choice. Hmm. Uh, if you choose to throw the water on the floor, then you're choosing not to play with the water. I get it, but you wouldn't like drag them by the arm into the shower and force that situation to happen because there could be longer consequences or something like that. Was, I was that guaranteed fair? that there would be yeah, long term consequences. They'll be the uh, <laughs> bathtub serial killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you end up in my office. Mommy never loved me. <laughs> right, 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 right. We're doing EMDR later, like it's extensive trauma therapy, for sure. Okay, yeah. it seems like you have to always respect a person's choice with regard to what they do with their body. Is there ever a chance where that's not the case? I'm sure. What's some examples? I don't know. Um, I think I don't know is a totally fine answer, by the way. Yeah, totally, yeah. So I'm, 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 sure. I'm so not one to hard press for an answer, but I, when does consent not matter and if there's a chime for that? like. Oh, well, like if you're attacking me, I don't give a fuck if you are. It's fine. It's, it's you too. Okay, good. I give a fuck. <laughs> if you want me to punch you in the face, <laughs> but it's going to happen. So when I am in physical sure. danger, yes. do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to do that. When it's, I wouldn't necessarily say like when it's in your best interest, but like I said, when your well-being is, is being harmed. When your physical safety. You have the right to protect your well-being. Right. I'm right. not going to ask for consent to, to fight back. You say it also applies to like prisoners? What do you mean? Um, so like a prisoner, like we're going to wash everyone down before they come into this mm -hmm. unit. You guys have to get naked. We're going to hit you out with this hose. Mm -hmm. And you have to take showers at these specific times. We don't mm -hmm. care if you don't want to not mm -hmm. take a shower. You're taking showers at this time. Right. Do you think you lose those rights if you get put into a, if a you penal lose sort of situation? <laughs> if you get, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, there is... Uh, there there aren't enough justified? sign. There are, there's not enough sand in, in, in the nation. <laughs> For us to continue down the path of what's wrong with the prison system. Mm. Um, Do you think they should have consent? I don't think the prison system should exist the way that it does. Oh. So I'm, we're going this way beyond Steven Universe. This is fundamental. <laughs> yeah, we did start on Steven Universe. Isn't that weird? Yeah. All right, let's try Let's see if we can like somehow swage that back. In Steven Universe, there was a prison. <laughs> yeah. That's true, yeah. There was a scene where uh, Steven Universe was trying to meet uh, Ruby and Sapphire. Right, and they were... Because they had been forcibly they been, split yep. apart with each other without their consent. That's absolutely true. I've never thought of the implications of that aside from just like until this conversation really because before then it was just like oh no they be powered um, Garnet that sucked because she's one of my favorite characters mm -hmm. but the fact that Steven had like these two people like completely split and put behind bars and he had to like find and, and when he released them the only thing they cared about was just getting back together again right seems like is that another analogy for consent and I, what would be like a good way to oh, contextualize yeah. that in that area like oh, yeah. don't split people up forcibly or is there something again I mean that? I feel like that's absolutely relevant to what's going on these days anyway it was ripping apart families and uh, and you know we talked about civil rights today in Sunday sure. assembly yeah um, and so you want to and <laughs> so that plus this plus the prison is you know the cradle to prison pipeline ripping apart African American families sure. and pulling fathers out of households mm. I mean continuously on a loop uh, and so I think in the show, mm. it's showing children, hey, when we rip people apart. It, do you remember how unbalanced those two characters are? Yeah. When they were apart? Okay, I get what you're saying. And how their mental health just like plummeted when they were apart they from each other. They only were thinking about getting back together right. again because they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't be function. apart. Yeah, right. exactly. They couldn't function without each other. Wow, that's really heavy. Yeah. That's that, really heavy. That's why, so I kept having these clients talk about this show. Mm. And I was like, all right. I got I gotta just watch the show. How far into the seasons are you? Like, what's the latest thing watched, that you've seen so far? Um, Stephen and Peridot have a pretty copacetic co relationship. I love Peridot. She's yeah, great. yeah. And um, where the where the other gems are still trying to fight her and still trying to figure, not trust her. If you can help me out from your perspective, because it sounds like you're pretty far into the show. 
could you explain the dynamics that you think are analogous to like real real oh, life like between story? like Stephen and like each of the gems? Uh-huh. Do you think like Amethyst and Stephen have like more of a brother sisterly bond? Oh, right? definitely. Yeah. And compared to like Pearl, who's clearly more motherly, where's Garnet fit into that? She's just like the rock star that lives at home, or is she like more of a parental figure to you? I, I would else? say if we look at the gender role stereotypes that we keep in our society, mm. um, I would call her the father. Oh. Right? So she says, yeah, Pearl's just trying to take care of you. That's why she's freaking out, right? And she says things like, um, well, let me teach you how to fight, Mm -hmm. right? Let me Uh teach you how to protect yourself. Okay. Um, Let me be strong and stoic and let some of these women go crazy while I come in here and try to settle things down with logic and ration. So if you look (laughs) at all of our gender stereotypes, right? So if you really uh, pull out what we say about men and women, I would say she's sure. the dad. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I can definitely see that. You had mentioned, I I don't know, I know you guys are getting ready to go. Anytime you're ready to go, it's totally fine. Sure, take uh, a few more minutes. Um, while there are such things as gender stereotypes that exist, um, how do you feel about the enforcement of those stereotypes? Do you think that it's, do you think that people who do t- People who say, I want to be more motherly, therefore I will do these things that mm-hmm. we have agreed are motherly. Or mm-hmm. I want to be more fatherly, so I'm going to take these things. And my husband should have these roles, and I should take care of this because we agreed on that implicitly right. because we know what the stereotypes are. I found, like, personally just saying, I found, like, that could be sort of detriment. I'm sure it can it can function, but it could be also detrimental long-term as far as, like, roles for so people. So one of the great strengths of feminism is that it aims to unlock men from the limitations that are put on them. Mm. We aim to say, you do not have to not cry. Right. You do not have to say that you can't feel. Uh, You do not have to not tell your child that you love them, you know, or hug your baby, or Or be silly and fun. Or be like the father that raised you. Right. Right, you have other options. You You have... limitless possibilities of what good looks like to you Hmm. Um, and so I think that that's one of the real strong benefits of current feminism to men is trying to unlock all of these restrictions that we are putting on men Um, I also think gender stereotypes regardless of what we think about them they're going to be around Um, and but they evolve over time too mm -hmm, very much so slowly but they do and as a sex and gender therapist I can't say there's no difference between men and women because sure. I am at that point denying the existence of my trans clients. Right. And my trans clients are a different gender than they were assigned at birth. Right. And so by saying there's no difference between the genders, I'm saying that's not real. Mm. Whatever you're feeling isn't real. So mm. that doesn't make sense for me to, to go that far, right? Mm. So I have to say, yes, there are differences between the gender roles and gender identities and gender expressions. Um, and I think they'll be there for a long time, but what we need to not do is tell people that they have to follow them. So just so I can understand, you're basically saying, yes, we have these models and they will change over time, but they they exist, unfortunately. They just do. Mm-hmm. But you aren't forced to, to be right. in that mold, right. and you're free to pick and choose. Right, we need to tell people that, you know, regardless of what you see is out there, yeah. your options are more varied than you think, and that that's that. okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, these were so many little great chats. But great! <laughs> I'm, gonna... I'm so glad you came. Isn't this great? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I know we get kicked out of here pretty soon, too, so... Oh.